We hadn't been to Dorset for quite a few years, and so earlier in the year when I was planning our holidays, I decided that Dorset would be a good idea. There's a nice new CL just outside Bridport, and so I booked in there. Bridport is on what is called the Jurassic Coast, and West Bay is very famous for all the fossils that could be found. Some of the cliffs around here are very unstable and caution is the key word when walking along underneath them. It's also a very popular area for fishing. Just a few miles east of Bridport is Lulworth Cove, which of course is a must for a visit. A few miles to the west is Lyme Regis, again a very popular seaside resort. Lyme Regis is often referred to as the Pearl of Dorset. There are many small popular beaches along this piece of coast and this one is at Burton Bradstock. Burton Bradstock is within easy cycling distance of where we were camped and so I cycled down there one evening. Not far from where we were camped are the subtropical gardens at Abbotsbury. These are very well worth a visit. There are a large number of sculptors following the theme of the Mad Hatter's Tea Party and these are scattered throughout the gardens. We were very fortunate with the weather during our stay in Dorset and the gardens were absolutely beautiful in the sunshine.
Within the easy reach of the caravan, there were many delightful small villages and country lanes, and I really enjoyed cycling around these lanes. Glad of the battery on the bike though, because some of the hills were very steep. The two nearest villages were loaders and uploaders. The narrow streets were quite a challenge with the bicycle and keeping out of the way of cars that were coming in either direction. I was lucky to find this old water mill in the village of Uploaders. It's a private house and I just discovered it by accident when I turned off the main road. There was another water mill with a restaurant and that was in the hamlet of Mangerton. Of course it's called Mangerton Mill. Betty was keen to go to Poundbury on the outskirts of Dorchester. She's rather fond of anything royal. Poundbury is built on land owned by Prince Charles and he helped in the design of the place. Right in the centre we discovered this, Bowes Lion Court. It's a McCarthy stone building, very similar to the one we are in. The similarity however is not in the design but in the operating principle. And this is the rather splendid reception area. And of course nearby is a rather splendid statue of Elizabeth Bowes Lion. The Queen Mother. I was very keen to visit Corfe while we were there because I wanted to get some good photographs of Corfe Castle. I didn't particularly want close-ups of the castle, I wanted to photograph it from some distance away. So we drove around the country lanes and eventually I found a couple of good spots. I was lucky with this one to actually get Wareham in the distance. I think I've managed to get some very good shots of the castle, well at least I'm pleased with them, and I'm very pleased with the lens that I've got. It's a Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter. It's stabilized and so I can hand hold it even at 500 millimeter. However, for these shots I did use a tripod. I have been using my old Nikon D70 with the telephoto lens, but that's becoming a bit unreliable. I've retired the D70 and gone back to changing lenses on the D750. I thought it would be a good idea to use two cameras because I was getting dirt on the sensors, but decided that I'll just have to be a bit more careful when I change lenses. We decided to go into the village of Corf and have lunch at the Banks Arms. However, the service was very, very slow and we were in there for nearly two hours. A last couple of shots of Corf Castle. And now a last few slides of the beautiful Dorset countryside.
It's designated an area of outstanding natural beauty and it's certainly well deserved.